This is my 2022 Trek Rail 9.8 XT, and it's completely standard, but actually I've got some changes that I've been wanting to make to the bike ever since I ordered it. I always wanted to build a long travel electric mountain bike that was built around the new Bosch 750 system. The rail was the closest fit out of the box. So in this video, I'm going to make a few changes to the travel and a couple of other parts on the rail, and I'm going to talk you through it. The rail is built around a 29er front and rear with 164 and 150 rear travel. But I want to make that a little bit longer. Longer for big days out in the Alps, but also suitable to ride on my local XC trails. So I think this is my ultimate version of an electric mountain bike for the modern day. Big 750 watt hour battery, long travel, punchy Bosch motor and full 29er and a nice slack head angle. And based around a coil shock with that super supple initial breakaway, So here we have it. There are a few changes from the studio. I'll go through those in a little bit more detail, but I've done probably 150 kilometers, 200 kilometers, and I've been playing quite a lot with the setup and the bars and the stem and the rise. So I'll cover that in a little bit more detail, but first off, let's go through the bike. So DT Swiss wheel set, the HXC 29er, HXC carbon rims, and they are the e-bike rims. They're the e-bike specific ones. Now, I've been using DT Swiss wheels for a few years now and they are very, very good quality. They last, they seem to last forever. And they've really beefed these up. So these ones have got thicker spokes, they've got re-engineered hubs, bigger ball bearings, and they're built for e-bikes. Now you might think e-bike specific is a bit of a waste of time, but I think on wheels it really does make sense. Now DT Swiss have done some studies that shows people ride e-bikes for way longer and at a much higher frequency. So our rides are much longer than they would be on a traditional mountain bike and you tend to ride more. I certainly do anyway, so they've beefed up everything and the new EXP hub has been redesigned with new oversized ball bearings, new star ratchet system. They're so easy to service yourself as well. So I love these wheels. Great wheel set from DT Swiss. Next up, the Fox Factory fork. Now I went for a 170 Fox Factory and previously I loved the Zeb Ultimate. I still do, the Zeb Ultimate is a fantastic fork. Actually, I probably would have upgraded that to the Ultimate spec, but I couldn't find that damper anywhere. And my previous experience with Fox Factory forks was pretty good. I found them a little bit harsh off the top. That was before I tried the e-bike specific one. Now, I tried a Yeti 160E and a Nuke Proof Megawatt, and they had the e-bike specific damper. And I loved it. I loved it so much. I was like, right, that is going on my next bike. The difference with that damper is it's softer on the top and it ramps up more. So they've made an e-bike specific tune and Fox say on their site that the reason they've done that is because e-bikes tend to ride through stuff rather than just down. And when you're riding through stuff, you want that kind of plush uh, initial stroke. And that's what they developed on here. So you get the really, really nice soft initial stroke that feels super plush, but you get loads of ramp up. Actually, I'll show you a little bottom out, a little huck to flat, and you can see, even on that like one meter huck to flat, you can still see there's a little bit of travel left just at the top where it's not completely bottomed out. So I've actually put a 170 on here. The standard rail comes with a 160, so I've gone up in 10 mil, and I've actually put this thick crown on here. Um, it's really annoying because when you buy it, it doesn't come with this e-bike specific crown. Fox don't actually sell it aftermarket, which is really frustrating. I hope they do soon. So I had to send it to Silverfish to get them to replace the CSU. So it's got this nice aesthetic thick crown on there. Serves no functional purpose other than looking better. So I like that. And on the rear, I put the Olin's coil on. I'm a massive coil convert. They just work beautifully because you get the plushness and the weight of the e-bike helps it glide over everything and you just get loads of grip and loads of feel from the back. So I love a coil. Now actually I've overstroked it. So it's got more rear travel, 
doesn't change the geometry or raise or lower it, but effectively the rear wheel travels further. So it's got about 165 mil of rear travel. So 170 front, 165 on the rear, which is basically a full enduro, super enduro almost, electric mountain bike. And you might be thinking that you've changed loads of parts on here, why? Well, I bought this rail knowing that I wanted to put a 170 fork, but a longer stroke rear shock in to create a long travel electric mountain bike. And so far it handles so well. So for tires, I really love the direct feeling that you get from a 2.4 tire. You just get a nice contact with the dirt. The 2.5s and 6s are really comfortable, but I find the 2.4s just give you a better feeling. Got a shorty on the front, it's quite draggy actually. It's drying out a bit in the UK, in the Northern Hemisphere. We're getting into spring and summer, so I'll probably swap that out. Now, because I'm using 2.4s front and rear, I actually lowered the bike by about five mil. Um, and going up on the front almost counteracted it, but I've actually put the flip chip on the rear in the high position. The bottom bracket is around 345 mil in height. So still pretty decent, but I just wanted to keep it balanced across the whole bike. I didn't want to change the geometry by going up on the front and not the back. So just kind of leveled it out and raised it a little bit. And I also put 160 mil crank arms on here. So I love pedaling up super chunky stuff, rocky terrain. And a lot of it is just getting better myself at trying to navigate the rocks and not get pedal strikes. But I think every little helps on an e-bike. So the standard crank arms are 165. I just took five mil off of that and put 160 mil crank arm on. And I've put these thin one-up pedals on. So I should be able to just get over more of the rocky stuff, more of the gnarly stuff on some of those climbs. Just gives a bit more pedal clearance. So because the bike is a large from an XL, I've been playing around a lot with the bars. Now I've actually got the highest bar rise I've ever had. I've gone for a 50 mil rise, these Bergtech ride high 50s. So they look proper BMX, proper moto. The reason I've done that is because I wanted to maintain as much reach as I could. And the lower your stem is on the stack here, the more reach you get. So as you start raising your stem, you start pulling the bars back towards you and shortening your effective reach. But if you run it closer to the stem, closer to the head tube slammed, and counter that with some riser bars, you can maintain the reach out front and still get the same kind of rise. Also, a little tip for you, I do really believe that you should experiment with bar height. If you're going over chunky terrain and your bars are too flat and you've not got enough height, you haven't got the leverage or the reach to be able to push your front wheel into the terrain. So if you're hitting a little bit of tech like logs or rocks and you want to kind of get that front wheel down, if you're already like massively extended like that, you haven't got enough leverage to be able to anticipate it and push the front wheel down. Whereas if they're up here, you've got a bit more leverage with your arms. So getting a good bar height is critical. And it's something I've only just started playing around with before I just raise and lower the bars on the stem. But I had three different sets of bars to go on this bike and two stems to try and get it right. And now I think I've hit that sweet spot. 50 mil rise, stem mounted pretty low on the stack. And that's maintaining as much reach as I can on this large bike. By the way, I am six foot three, 191 centimeters, and I'm riding a large. And the reach on this is about 486. The XL is like 515, 520. So I wanted something that was a little bit more nimble in the tight and twisty turns, and this has given me that. I'm super happy that I sized down. So I've also gone for the Bike Yoke Revive, 213 mil dropper. It's super nice, silky smooth action, feels brilliant. It's a uh, 34.9 seat tube, so it's got that thick stanchion on it, keeps it nice and stiff, keeps it all in proportion. Like I said, the Olin's coil with an EXT spring on the rear. Um, the Olin's coil in the high position gives about 165 mil, maybe a little bit more actually, of rear wheel travel, and it's super plush, beautiful feeling. I love the coil. The rest of it, little bits and pieces that just help you on your rides, this one up, little EDC tool in there, super helpful when you're trying to adjust brake levers and bars and all that stuff that you always need on the trail. Shimano XT drivetrain, it's got the brilliant XT shifter, which is just fantastic. I think ergonomically, the Shimano XT shifter is the best out of anything. It's just so nice getting to the top of a hill and you're just about to drop in and you can be like, bam, 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 bam. Shifting down with the index finger, 
It's so ergonomic. I wish, I wish it was wireless. Hopefully one day, Shimano, they've got to, haven't they, do some kind of wireless gears, wireless shifting. And Shimano XT brakes with the 203 rotors. Love the bite point on these. Bites in nice and quick, and there's not a huge amount of movement after you hit that bite point. So to me, it feels nice and firm. I don't like squidgy brakes that feel like they need bleeding. So love these, nice short little levers. A Couple of other things, I went for the PT's little red valves. And I actually, uh, this is so bad, isn't it? But I actually changed the Fox decals to red, but I think it makes you feel good, doesn't it? The bike, looking at it makes you feel good. That's why we spend so long looking at colors and all those different combos that work well together. So red decals, and I'm starting to like the color. When I first got it, I was a bit like, not too sure, but now it's got all the bits on that I like. I think I really am digging the look and I love the kind of reflective foil look that you get in that logo. So I've built this bike to be a do everything type of e-bike from cross country rides to just riding around on my local trails to some of the roughest stuff in the Alps. And I think that this will do it. It's got the brilliant Bosch motor, super punchy, super powerful, 170 fork, 165 rear travel, 29er. It's basically, yeah, I'm really looking forward to testing it out over the next year. So if you do want to learn a little bit more about this bike, make sure you're subscribed because I'll bring out a few more long-term videos. Oh, by the way, it's definitely worth checking out this video just here where I have a drag race with this, six e-bikes in total. So go and check that out and I'll catch you real soon.